Uh, Admiral Aquilino, good to see you again. Is it correct that the president's budget includes barely half for 58 percent of the capabilities and priorities that you list as critical in your CZ initiative report? Uh, Congressman Gallagher, so we've identified a requirement of 26.5, of which there's an $11 billion shortfall. So the total cost of where we're short is about $11 billion. Yes, sir. And can you explain to this committee and the American people the consequence of failing to find that funding, uh, which includes money for things like defending Guam and the Joint Fires Network? Yeah, I think I would uh, define it in the form of time, Congressman. So this intent to, for emergency and to move faster, any delays in those fundings or reduce fundings, push everything out, and then uh, those capabilities we've asked for deliver uh, not in a relevant time or in a time where they don't deliver the deterrent effects soon enough. So the $11 billion, $11 billion uh, is important to find. Uh, do you know how much uh, expiring funds, uh, expired funding was canceled from the Defense Department last year and returned to the Treasury? where it sits in abeyance for five years and then evaporates. Do you know yeah, how much? I don't have that number, sir. The answer is $11 billion, which is the amount of money you need for your critical priorities list. Uh, not only did we fail to take advantage of money that was appropriated, that we could have rerouted for our priority theater, the Indo-Pacific, to give you the resources you need to prevent World War III, the department was actively working against a legislative effort to give DOD the flexibility to reroute that money. I would hope going forward, we would find a way to take advantage of that money for our most critical priorities, particularly uh, stockpiling critical munitions and surging it west of the international dateline before it's too late. By some estimates, we've lost $125 billion over the last decade, which is unacceptable. Um, and I fear we're sleepwalking into a conflict that would be horrific. Uh, Dr. Ratner, uh, you know, in recent years, we've seen increasing attempts by the CCP to expand their political and economic relationships in the region. I think the, the Solomon Islands security deal caught a lot of people by surprise. It was doubly disheartening given just the history we have and the fact that a lot of Marines paid with their lives for Guadalcanal. And I think the same geographic logic that made it important in World War II makes it important today. Uh, the, all the islands, I mean, they're less than 0.4% of the world's landmass, but their EEZs are something like 14% of the worldwide total. Um, we narrowly have avoided uh, failing to renew the compact and free association states uh, agreements. Um, I guess what, if, if you were to advise this committee to be paying attention to something that flies under the radar, that isn't as sexy as, say, the defense of Taiwan or, you know, what we do with Japan and, and Guam itself, where, where would that be? Where in the region do we need to be spending more time and attention so we can avoid the CCP doing something like they did in the Solomon Islands? Well, thank you, Congressman, and, and fully agree with you that the renewal of the COFA agreement was a really important bipartisan achievement for Congress. That's an area larger than the continental United States uh, that will now be uh, more free uh, and more peaceful because of it. Um, look, I think we have a clear understanding of the PRC's uh, strategy in the Indo-Pacific and globally. We've articulated that in the China Military Power Report. They are looking to gain influence and power, and they are looking to divide U.S. allies and partners. There are the areas that are fundamentally important and of the focus uh, of this committee, uh, and there are areas where they're pursuing new initiatives, uh, including overseas basing initiatives, which might be one of those areas. Just to answer your question yeah. very specifically, the Military Power Report has articulated places where uh, we believe the PLA is pursuing basing opportunities in South Asia, in Africa, potentially in the Western Hemisphere. That may be an area of uh, additional committee attention. Um, and then quickly, Admiral Aquilino, if we don't have access to Guam, Japan, and South Korea, either because of enemy action or political constraints in a conflict, what does that mean for your ability to replenish fuel and stores and do repairs in the midst of a conflict? Yeah, Congressman, any, any, uh, again, our, our strategy has been to diversify, and again, if you look at the posture uh, asks that we've had, they certainly are broad and expansive across uh, the theater. That's designed to ensure that if there's any places that we are unable to use, that we do have alternative places to use. Some of those are land-based, some of those might be sea-based. So, uh, again, the approach that we've laid out, I think, takes into account resilient, redundant, and flexible. My time... I'll yield my four seconds back. 